Good evening. We're back with another episode of the Lord of the Rings LCG Progression Series. And tonight's a card review of the Race Across Herod Adventure Pack. This is the second adventure pack of the cycle. So let's take a look. The hero is Thurindir. 8 threat, 2-2-0, 4 health. Thurindir gets plus 1 willpower for each side quest in the victory display. Search your deck for a side quest and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck. Interesting. Well, this card allows you to design a deck around a side quest. And there are some side quests that could be quite good if you do that. For example, a storm comes, the storm comes will allow you to design decks that don't where you don't necessarily have to worry about what sphere your hero's in. There is a side quest now that will allow you to draw an additional card in each resource phase. That opens up some deck building possibilities because card draw is a, a big factor in how fast your deck is going to be. How fast your deck is going to be a, is a big factor in how strong it's going to be in solo play. I like this card. I don't know if his stats are good enough to say that he's going to be a good card in the very best decks. Meaning like, uh, is he of a power comparable to Elrond, or Gandalf, or Eowyn? No, I don't think so, but he's... He eliminates luck from the equation when you're building your deck around a side quest. And that enables you to do some interesting things, and we'll see what side quests continue to go out. And once you complete the side quest, he's three willpower. More if you complete more side quests, but that's going to be later in the game, so we'll say he's three willpower, hopefully on turn one or turn two, after turn one or turn two which is not bad. He's relatively low threat. He's a Duna Dine and a Ranger, if that matters. I like this card. I think it's a good card. And I think it opens up some very interesting deck building possibilities with some of the new side quests that have come out. In particular, the side quests that allow you to do something every turn, like a, the Storm Comes or the one that allows you to draw an extra card every turn. So if Thurindir, for example, read two two or three two zero four, and first ally you play doesn't need a resource match, would that be a good card? Yeah, I mean it would, and you can do that after one turn of delayed progress. Or if it read draw two cards every round or something like that. So. I don't think this is an elite hero, but it's very good. It's very good, and it opens up interesting possibilities. And I'll be excited to try out decks with him in it. Khalil's Tribesman, 2 cost, 1-1-1, one, 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 2 health. Exhaust Khalil's Tribesman to choose another Herod character. That character gets plus one willpower, plus one attack, and plus one shields until the end of the phase. Interesting. Well, he's a little understated. He's understated by one resource, basically. He's a cheap Harad character, and that's what the Haradrim deck needed. The Harad deck needed, because all the allies in the first adventure pack were quite high cost. But he's understated, and the ability, it doesn't add stats because you have to exhaust him to use it. So who would that be good on? Jubayar is uh, the defender. Be good on him. The others, I don't think it would do anything particularly strong or not strong. It just is kind of is there.
But I do think this card has a place in some Jubiar decks. Be a contributing card. It'll enable a strategy where you of using Jubiar as your primary defender. Could have a place in a Harad deck, although at this point I think the Harad deck is with Khalil as your main hero is mostly a fun deck. This does have synergy with him in that you can discard it to ready him. And it's a leadership card, so the fact that you can pay for it with Khalil's ability doesn't really matter because Khalil's already leadership. I don't think this significantly adds to the power of the Harad deck. It may add a little bit to the power of a Jubiar deck. And that's good. So it might be worth playing just for that. Steed of the North mount. Attached to Dunedain or Ranger hero. Restricted. After you engage an enemy, exhaust Steed of the North to ready attached hero. After you engage an enemy. Okay, that's not bad. I think this is worthy of inclusion in a Dunedain deck, and the, so the developers have been kind of consistently adding cards that are pretty decent in Dunedain. Uh, but they don't make Dunedain super powerful. I don't know if that's what they're going for. I suspect it wasn't. But they do increase the playability of it, like the how fun it is, how it can be a little versatile, but it's always had the same weakness, and that weakness is willpower. And card draw before you get it set up. Although if you're running Damrod in it, it can help. But it doesn't have a lot of good card draw options. Early. Like uh, Eladan, or uh, Helrond Vilya, or Gandalf, or uh, something like that. Aristor. But it's a fun deck and it remains fun and I think this card is a good card in that deck. But not outside of it. It could be okay. It could give you some action advantage outside of the Dunedain deck. But it's overshadowed significantly by Unexpected Courage, Slide of the Valinor, etc. I would much rather play Unexpected Courage than Steed of the North if I had access to Spirit Sphere. And I don't think I would run both. Except in a Dunedain deck. Dunedain. Yeah, this could work in that deck. Be pretty good in that deck. Mighty Warrior. Attached to a hero, one cost. Limit one per hero. Attached hero gains the warrior trait. After you play it from your hand, draw a card. Okay, so it's basically for one cost. It's a placeholder in the deck. And it grants the warrior trait. Well, if you really like your combination of heroes, but you also really like a card that requires the warrior trait to play, then I guess... You could play this without too much downside. That's about all you could say about it. It doesn't have a lot of downside except for one resource. Not a lot of upside either. But it could be definitely useful for thematic decks. Potentially, I suppose, if you had a combination that you really liked and uh, of heroes, but you also really liked a card that requires you to play warrior, yeah. Uh, that's about all you can say about it. That's its usefulness. It's In that situation, it's okay, worth including, but I don't think that situation will come up a lot. You probably won't see this in many of my decks. Proud Hunters, zero cost. Play only if you control a unique character with the noble trait and another unique character with the ranger trait. After a hero you control participates in an attack that destroys an enemy, add X resources to that hero's pool. X is the just destroyed enemy's printed threat. 
Well, it's fairly situational, but it allows you resource generation outside of the leadership sphere, which is rare. If you have those two heroes with a noble and a ranger trait, and you have access to tactics, and you don't have a lot of resource acceleration, then this card would be worth it, or you have a pressing need for resource acceleration. That's fairly niche, though. Typically, you're going to get two, two resources with this. I'd call that roughly equal to Captain's Wisdom. Captain's Wisdom requires you to exhaust a hero to get it. So it's probably a little bit better in that it, you don't have to exhaust a hero. You do something that you were already going to do anyway, which is destroy an enemy. However, that situation is not as readily available to you as the Captain's Wisdom situation. So I'd call these cards roughly equivalent. And Captain's Wisdom does see play, so I expect this will see play too. Nothing exceptional, but it's it's solid in the situation where you can take advantage of it and you don't have other means of resource acceleration or you don't have enough, if you find you don't have enough. Dunatine Pathfinder, zero cost, 2102. After Dunatine Pathfinder enters play, search the top five cards of the encounter deck for a non-unique location and add it to the staging area. If no location enters play, discard Dunedain Pathfinder. Okay, so you get a zero cost, two willpower ally, but you have to put a location into play, which will typically have about two threat and take three or four progress to clear. Uh, I don't think this card is good. The other warrior card that has a similar effect at least puts an enemy into play engaged with you, which is Dunedain benefit from. They don't benefit from locations in the staging area, so I'd call this card worse than the pa than the other Dunedine zero cost card. It's off theme, but if you had a way set up to deal with locations very efficiently, this would be good because you just get a free ally basically for two willpower. But you kind of have to build your deck for it, or you'd have to play it in a deck that's already built to deal with locations very efficiently. These are curious cards, I would say. Dunedain Pathfinder, Mighty Warrior, Steed of the North. They're not exactly good, they're not exactly bad, they're just, they're kind of thematic, is how I would describe this adventure pack so far. Except for Thurindir, which I really like, and Khalil's Tribesman, but the other four cards I would say are thematic cards. Not especially good or bad. They allow you to play on theme. Backtrack. One cost. Play only if the main quest has no keywords. Remove X progress from the main quest to place X progress on a location in the staging area. Well, this is a great option for getting locations out of the staging area which have high travel costs, but not high when explored costs. I would consider this a great option in that scenario. And this will probably see play. But I don't think it's an elite card, and I, I think there are better options to do this effect. They're uh, better meaning you can resolve the, or you can get a location over from staging to the active location without resolving the travel effect and that it's better to do it that way because it gets the location out of staging immediately which means you don't have to deal with its threat. So this card allows you to resolve the travel effect or get rid of the travel effect but it has the downside that you still have to deal with the threat on the location. And there are other cards such as Thoror's Map, for example, 
which allow you to do that, but get the location out of staging right away, so you don't have to deal with the threat, which I like better, and I don't think you would run both. So this is good, but it's overshadowed. Aaron Galen Settler, two cost, one, two, zero, two. When the active location leaves play as an explored location, discard Aaron Galen Settler to discard a location in the staging area with the same title as the just explored location. Well, that happens, but it's not common where you have an active location and a location with the same title in the staging area, and you can't really do anything to set it up. It just kind of happens on accident. I guess in the meantime you get two cost for two attacks so this is a card that you would play if you need attack and you're running lore and if the situation happens then you're happy about it but it's not something you try to set up or play specifically for. So this is a, a card that you play if you need attack and you're running lore. But I don't think you play it for the effect. That, that effect isn't going to happen often enough. In fact, it happens so rarely that when it does happen, you may forget that this card has this ability because you've just been playing it for its attack for so long or for a little questing power. I don't know if there's ever going to be a Woodman synergies, but that would be a danger that you'll just forget the text exists. So it's mainly for its attack out of the lore sphere. Explore Secret Ways, one cost, six progress to complete, it's a lore side quest. Limit one in the victory display. While this card is in the victory display, each location in the staging area with the same title as the active location does not contribute its threat to the total threat in the staging area. Well that, you're going to be able to, you're going to spend one resource and a card, make six progress, and then you're going to get the benefit of this in like one out of every I don't know, 10 games or more. Uh, this isn't good, unless there's something, some challenge coming that I don't know about. I don't understand why both lore cards would be geared in this direction, because I can't fairly remember, very rarely remember this situation ever happening. So unless they've designed a quest for this to happen, I don't uh, see these cards seeing a lot of play. Or, I mean, explore secret ways even less. The Settler at least has the benefit of two attack for two cost, which is good. But man, explore secret ways, I'd be pretty shocked to see this unless it's designed to overcome some specific challenge, but pretty shocked to see this in any good decks. A lot of effort for an effect that almost never happens, as far as I can remember. Steward of Orthanc. 3 cost, 2 zero, zero, 2 health. When you play an event, give it Doomed 1 to draw a card. You cannot trigger this ability if you have already triggered the ability of a Steward of Orthanc this round. Interesting, so for one threat you can draw a card for each event. Well, I don't play a lot of events. Events are typically one-time effects non-permanent effects, and I don't like non-permanent effects. But if I did have a deck with with a lot of events and very low uh, threat, I might consider this card. It's got two willpower for three, which isn't terrible. It's neutral. If It's got doomed synergy, if that matters. So this may have a use. Uh, I don't think the doomed deck is elite at this moment. But I'm open to the possibilities, and so this card could be good, but you need a deck built around it. That deck being low starting threat and a lot of events. In which case this card would be pretty good in that deck. Well, it's not a very common deck, and it certainly won't be very common for me, I don't think. So this adventure pack is, I would say, curious. Curious in that the first two cards, Thurindir is pretty good and enables inter interesting strategies. Khalil's Tribesmen could be a contributor in a good deck. The other cards are all kind of uh, thematic cards, I would say. Thematic, 
overshadowed or just not very good, and then you have Steward of Orthanc, which is very situational. So, curious adventure pack. I'll have to do some playtesting with Thurindir to see how good it is before I could say whether I would recommend this adventure pack or not. I'd lead, lean towards it being mostly okay to ignore if you're buying packs for their card strength. It's possible there's an exceptional Thurindir deck out there. But otherwise, I'd lean toward this being mostly ignorable. So thanks for watching.